Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us here at an unlikely story for two of my very favorite authors, the nicest people on the planet and probably the most talented, you know, probably. Um, we have Lincoln Purse and our own Jeff Kinney. I have a couple of housekeeping items to start with. If you lose your connection or your video, just refresh your page or exit out of the browser and then you can jump right back in. If you have questions for Lincoln, you can type them in the ask a question box at the bottom of your screen. You can also upvote any questions so that they float to the top. The most popular ones float to the top. Um, click the green button below. Look at this. You can get your very own copy, hot off the press today, The Tower of Time. We thought we had book plates, but no, we have actual signed books. Look at this. Ta-da. So you can buy the third one, which is the Tower of Time signed, and we have book plates that will go with books one and two right here. So click the button, buy some books. Uh, Lincoln Purse is a New York Times bestselling author and cartoonist. His comic strip, Big Nate, appears in over 400 newspapers worldwide and online at gocomics.com backslash Big Nate. In 2010, Lincoln introduced the self-styled king of detention to a new generation of young readers as a series of illustrated novels. In the past 10 years, over 20 million Big Nate books have been sold, and Nickelodeon has created an animated series based on the character. Lincoln and his wife, Jessica, have two children, and they live in Portland, Maine. Having just finished the Big Nate series, well, not just, but time is all a mess right now. Um, in 2016, when we were lucky enough to host Lincoln for one of our very first events here at the bookstore, Lincoln has moved on, or should we say back to the Middle Ages in his new instant New York Times bestselling series, Max and the Midnights, that originated as a spoof of sword and sorcery tales. The Tower of Time just came out today. If you guys were here, we would have cake. So when we're back to in-person, Lincoln is coming back and we're gonna all have cake. Uh, it just released today. It reunites Max and her friends for a rollicking time travel saga. So now enough from me. It is my great honor and pleasure to welcome Lincoln Purse and Jeff Kinney. Thanks, Hi. Kim. Lincoln, how are you doing? Good, Jeff. How are you doing? I am very excited that you <laughs> have decided to launch this book, uh, Max and the Midnights, The Tower of Time, with us. It's so cool. Such a privilege to get you on your actual launch day. So congratulations to you. You've got a trilogy. What do you think about that? Uh, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, when I, when I started this, what became a series, I thought it was going to be a one-off. I thought that the first Max and the Midnights book was just going to be sort of a... Uh, you know, just a standalone story. And I remember driving down to have lunch with you and I brought you the manuscript and um, and to show it to you and you read it. And I think you said at the time, like, well, this is, this is a series waiting to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and at the time I thought, no, I just wanna do one, but uh, I enjoyed it so much and um, Kids seem to like it. And so I thought, I definitely have a couple more stories in me. So it did become a trilogy. And uh, there's something nice about three. You know, there's a lot of book series that have occurred in trilogies. So I think I'm in a, I'm working in a pretty decent tradition there. Yeah. And speaking of the number three, believe it or not, this year mar marks the 33rd year of our friendship. Can you believe that? That's incredible, Jeff. <laughs> I, I'm sure everybody out there is saying, God, these guys must have met in preschool, uh, but no, that's not right. how it happened. Can you, t can you tell everybody how we first met? Yes, we met because you wrote me a fan letter, Jeff. So you were a student at the University of Maryland. I was in my first year of syndication with Big Nate. And correct me if I, I can't remember if you saw it in the Washington Post or the Baltimore Sun, but it was in one of the two. And you wrote me a letter and here's what set your letter, letter apart from all the other letters that I would sometimes get from aspiring cartoonist, Jeff. Those other letters were one paragraph. Yours was four pages long. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you were an aspiring cartoonist and you had all sorts of questions for me. And so I wrote you back. And uh, this was, of course, before the days of email. So we were really like old fashioned pen pals for a while there. Uh, you would send me examples of... You were doing a comic strip for the Diamondback, your college newspaper, called Igdoof. 
and um, and you would send me some examples of IGDOOF and I would send you, you know, like little little suggestions or little tips, but you are way more advanced and talented as a cartoonist than I had been at a comparable stage in my own uh, college cartooning career. So uh, I was mightily impressed, Jeff, with, uh, with IGDOOF and with your aspirations. And then of course, years later, you know, we had lost touch for a little bit there. And then years later, um, I saw an advertisement for you that you were going to be doing a, a reading or a, 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 a talk of some kind at a Boston area bookstore for the first Diary of a Wimpy Kid. And yeah. I, said, I said, that's my Jeff Kinney. <laughs> <laughs> How did this happen? And so then, uh, so we got back in touch and then um, we have been in close contact since then. And I'm so grateful for this friendship. And there, there's a little more to it is that you did, you did me an incredible kindness. Uh, your, your comic was syndicated all over the place and it was in the Washington Post and the Sunday section as well as the daily section. And one day you said, hey, you should check out, you know, this upcoming Sunday comic and take a look. Or actually my brother called me that day, said, Jeff, take a look at today's Big Nate. And, and Big Nate was holding up a comic, uh, page of stickers. And a tiny, tiny, just like one centimeter, was a picture of Igdoof. And I felt like I had like won a Grammy Award, <laughs> Oscar. Like it was definitely the biggest day of my life up to that point. And I was like, I'm on my way. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be a famous cartoonist. I remember my uncle looked at it and he said, so what? It's a stinking centimeter. Um, <laughs> but to me, it was a big deal. And you also sent me an original comic. So this is an original Big Nate from way back then. And I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to embarrass you just a little because, yes, that's right. You can barely see it. Yes, um, those are the cheesy pens that I used back then, Jeff. They just <laughs> fade away to nothing. I know. So I have this up on my wall. I do have some original artwork from you that's more recent, but I have this in my studio because it always reminds me <laughs> of how important and special this was. It was 1991 that I got this. And I really do believe that 10 years from now, somebody's going to walk into my studio and look at a blank piece of paper and wonder why <laughs> I framed it. Um, and something else that's funny about that time that I saw you in uh, in Portland, Maine, actually, because I did come, come up there, is that I was just talking about, you know, in my speech, I was talking about um, how you really mentored me. And I just said, sort of, you know, I was just like, is Lincoln Purse here? <laughs> and then I heard, <laughs> yo, from the back, <laughs> back row. Very uh, strange. Um, so let's hope, let's hope for 33 more years of friendship. Absolutely. 33 more great years and then some. Yeah, but let's talk about the reason that we're here. This is Max 3 in shorthand. And I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, I love this book. It's my favorite in the series. I've loved them all. Uh, but this one is the best in terms of storytelling, action, and humor. And I, I mean it when I say I really couldn't put it down. Uh, I think it's it's so cool. I'm going to continue to gush for a minute before you have anything to say. I also <laughs> wanted to say like how impressed I am by, by what you're doing. Uh, your books are really the perfect blend of pictures and words. And I think it's really interesting. Oh, what's up, Kim? She appeared no, no. for a second. <laughs> Technical difficulty. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, when I, uh, comics are a weird thing, right? Because if you're a real comic book reader or a graphic novel reader, you actually sort of have to be trained on how to read them. It's hard. It's hard to read them. And so when I decided to write Diary of a Wimpy Kid, which is sort of in the language of comic strips, but I wanted to make sure people knew how to read it. So for me, it was text words, text words, right? I wanted to make sure they couldn't go astray. You're, you're bringing this to a whole different level. You know exactly how to read this, but it's linear. It, I, I am impressed. I think that nobody can touch you in terms of what you're doing. I really think you've created a new uh, art form. I think that anybody that tries to do what you're doing is going to be years behind you. Um, and I just wanted to talk about how did you, how did be, being a cartoonist, a big name for all these years, 35 years, right? Um, or, or so, how, how did that help you to write this kind of a book? 
Wow. Well, thank you, Jeff. You are too kind. Um, I think the biggest thing in terms of writing, well, first of all, you helped me get my foot in the door with writing books in the first place. And um, as you, as you, you know, might remember, um, one of the uh, people that you put me in touch with, helped put me in touch with was the woman who became my beloved editor, Phoebe Ye. Mm. And when we were talking about, when you and I were talking about, oh, there should be big Nate books. My only aspiration was that there should be big Nate collections of the comic strip. Mm. I wasn't thinking at all about writing books. And I didn't realize that Phoebe was either. And so when I went to meet Phoebe in New York and we started talking about it, I said, she was talking and I, st and I started to get the feeling like, wait, she's not talking about collections. She's talking about uh, new stories. Mm. And, I, and I sort of kind of sheepishly interrupted her and I said, do you know that I've never written a book before? <laughs> <laughs> and she waved her hand. She said, oh, you can write a book. Mm. She said, you've been writing these characters for, at that time it was 18 years or whatever it was. She said, you can write a book. And that gave me a lot of confidence. But she did not really talk at all about format or anything like that. She just sort of said, why don't, why don't you just try a chapter and see how it goes? Mm. I said, how long should a chapter be? I knew nothing about <laughs> writing books. And she said, how about between 12 and 20 pages? I said, okay. Mm. So... I think what helped me most was that, you know, when I am writing the comic strip, I tend to imagine, I think of jokes by thinking of, of conversations that Nate will have with classmates or teachers or what have you. And those conversations help me imagine situations that he can be in. So I already feel like I have sort of Nate's conversational voice inside my head. And from there, it felt like a pretty natural jump to have Nate essentially just be the, the first person narrator of these books. But I knew I didn't want to have every word out of his mouth be included in a speech bubble. Mm -hmm. I wanted there to be some things that it was clear he was saying out loud, other things that were internal thoughts where I did not have to always use a thought balloon mm -hmm. to sort of follow his thoughts. So I said, well, I'm just going to switch him up. You know, I'm going to go back and forth between text and pictures. But you're right. People sort of have to. I had some misgivings because people do sort of have to learn to read comics. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, is it going to be difficult for people to follow the flow from text to cartoon, back to text and so on and so forth? So I said, I'm just going to. I'm just going to do the absolute best I can to make sure that it's clear in what order you're supposed to read this stuff you know either by the way i'm positioning the pictures um or by the way uh you know a, a written sentence then sort of leads into a speech bubble yeah and I, it's sort of a rhythm thing you know I, I call myself a rhythm writer because uh it has to sound right to me when i read it back to myself yeah. And sometimes when I do that, I will I will realize, oh, clearly this can't be in a paragraph. This needs to be in a speech bubble. It's just going to work much better. Yeah. But if you ask me to articulate why it works better in a speech bubble, I'm not sure I could really say why. It's just a feeling thing. Yeah. And some uh, something that I was wondering when I was reading this is, like, do you feel you've got these really strong characters? You've got, you know, Max has her group of friends and they're every bit as funny as, as Nate and Francis. And I wonder, do you ever feel like that you're almost cheating on the big Nate gang by having this other universe <laughs> that they don't know about? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I feel like they're all related, you know, in a way. I mean, I think there are clear connections in terms of some of the personalities of the characters. You know, there's a lot of Nate and Max there's a lot of Chad in Kevin from Max and the Midnights, you know, sort of like a, a very sort of sweet, good natured, cheery character, you know, like Chad is in Big Nate. So I think maybe that just says I only have so many characters. <laughs> I'm, I, my imagination will only take me so far. And then I start sort of, you know, kind of poaching my own characters from one property to the next. But but uh, I think there's a connection and I, and, and um, but I like the connection and I think, um, 
you know, there are some, sometimes if I'm working on uh, one, you know, if I'm working on Max, I'll think of a joke for Max and it won't necessarily be right for Max, but I'll say I can use that in Big Nate. You know, it'll work much better in Big Nate. So that's really cool. And something you did in this book, I won't give too much away, but there is a, there's a crossover moment. So anybody that wanted to get their Big Nate <laughs> pick can get it. Which was really cool, and that proves I read your book, so that's that's cool too. Um, tell us, so there there are some kids who have logged on who are big big Nate fans, but they haven't been introduced to, to Max in, in the Midnights yet. Can you just tell us, like, when you first meet Max in book one, just tell us what you know about Max from that from those first few pages? You know that Max is that Max lives in the Middle Ages, that Max is an apprentice troubadour and that Max dreams of becoming a knight. There's no real interest in being a troubadour. And uh, one thing that was important to me was that, you know, I wanted to write an adventure story, but I wanted it to be funny. Those were the two biggies. Mm -hmm. And I knew that could be done because, you know, a, a hero of yours, Carl Barks, did that all the time with, with Donald, Duck and, uh, Donald Duck and Uncle Scrooge stories, like great adventure stories with a lot of humor in them. So, you know, I sort of aspired to that same sort of blend. And one thing that was important to me was that Max has had a vibe of being like a really sort of contemporary kid, even though this thing was set in the Middle Ages. So another thing you know about Max in those first few pages of the first book is that, oh, this story is happening in the Middle Ages, but Max is is just like, you know, a friend of mine from school, you know, talks like a, a, a modern day kid has, you know, these sort of like internal feelings that hopefully that readers can identify with. So that's pretty much what you know about Max. And then there's a there's a big reveal about Max about 50 pages in, um, which I which I uh, kept very, very secret in the in the lead up to uh, the release of the first Max in the Midnight's book. Yes, you did. And and I won't talk about that. I've already given it away by uh, in the way that I've spoken. Uh, and I probably will again. Um, so, but what I was really impressed by in this book, book is that Max um, has a great backstory. And I think you've already told me in this conversation that you probably didn't have that backstory plotted out in, you know, from the first book on. Did, <laughs> did you only start thinking about where Max came from? Because Max is an orphan, right? Uh, did you only start thinking about where Max came from in this book? Uh, a little before that, but um, it's true. I do. Uh, I, I don't know if I am unusual or, or different from other authors in this way, but um, I do sort of just make up the books as I go along. And so <laughs> one of the things that I think might have horrified Phoebe, my editor, when we first started <laughs> working together was, you know, I was just sending in chapters one at a time <laughs> and maybe at about halfway through she sort of said, now what's going to happen at the, how's this going to end? And I said, I don't have the foggiest idea. <laughs> and uh, I like that. I like working that way. I, I have never not been able to think of a good way to conclude a story. Mm -hmm. So it's working for me. I'm just, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, as they say. Um, so, yeah, well, obviously I wasn't thinking about Max's backstory when I wrote the first one because it was just going to be a standalone book, like I said right. earlier. Yeah. So it really wasn't until the second one, uh, which is called Battle of the Bodkins, and not to give too much away, but Bodkins are these creatures who can look exactly like mm -hmm. the characters around them, you know, the, the, the people who live in the kingdom of Bijovia. And so that was a leaping off point for me to because at that point I knew I was going to write a third book. And I said, okay, I can, I can create another character who can exist in the second book and then become a much bigger part of the third. And there that character is. So <laughs> you put, you've put that character on the cover. Um, so something I think is really interesting is that, you know, you've worked in comics for a long time and something that you know is that comics have shrunk more and more and more, which is one of the reasons that your characters have big head, uh, big heads and small bodies. Um, you know, in, in Charles Schultz's work too, Peanuts is the same kind of thing. It was a function of the shrinking newspaper comics trying to cram more and more on the page. Um, but you also work in two dimensions, right? You don't often, there isn't often any depth to the pictures. 
in this book especially, I really noticed that there were a lot of pictures where you could see into the distance or there was a different perspective. And I just, I, I like this picture right here. I wouldn't even dare to draw this picture, like where <laughs> the characters in, are in a bit of three quarters view, you know, it, it's like there, there, there's some characters that are near and some characters that are far. Um, do you feel like you're sort of flexing your artistic muscles a little bit more with these books? You can definitely get more ambitious with the artwork, there's no doubt. And, um, you know, I was doing a school visit, a virtual school visit earlier today with some uh, schools up here in Maine. And uh, one of the things I said, uh, there was a question from one of the students about how has your drawing style changed over the years? Mm -hmm. And one of the things I said was, well, you know, I've improved a lot. And when I was a kid, I think maybe a lot of kids might think this way, you know, what, as you're practicing your trombone or whatever it is that you're doing as a kid, you think, okay, practicing is a thing that kids do. And then you become an adult and you sort of magically, you're as good as you're ever going to get, you know, at age 25 or whatever you think an adult age is. But in fact, you improve throughout, you know, and so I'm 58. I can draw better at 58 than I could when I was 48, you mm. know, and, and there's a lot of stuff in the Max and the Midnight's books that I never would have had occasion to try to draw in Big Nate, you know, castles, dragons, you know, all, you know, monsters, trolls, you know, all, all these sorts of things. And so I, I do feel like I'm stretching myself and challenging myself to make uh, more ambitious drawings. And I should just do a shout out to my uh, artistic collaborator and assistant, Tom Racine, who <laughs> is responsible for all the gray tones in this book. So he's a Photoshop master. Yeah. So, you know, like there, there is a, a scene toward the end of the book where they are sailing over a sea that is boiling hot. Mm -hmm. And, and I never could have drawn the effect of the heat, you know, the steam uh, rising off the water, mm -hmm. but Tom found a way to make that look great. So uh, I may be flexing my artistic muscles a little bit, but uh, I'm doing it with some help from my friend Tom as well. Yeah. And here's some some of that gray tone. That's a gradient, right? Right. And so, can you tell everybody who um, who might be interested in old school cartooning how you would have achieved that effect if you were doing it on your own and you wanted to achieve that kind of an effect? How would you have done it? Because you could have done it back in the day without a computer. Can you tell everybody how you would have done it? Well, I would have done it just by uh, the miracle of cross hatching, Jeff. <laughs> oh, you would have really, yeah, you would have really done it with a pen. <sighs> uh, but they had stuff back then called Zipatone too, That's which I ne which I never used. But Zipatone was sort of this adhesive gray scale mm -hmm. that you would literally like cut into the shape you want. So if you wanted an area of shadow, if you wanted mm -hmm. a gradient area, area, you could have Zipatone, you know, gradient Zipatone, and you could you literally would be cutting out this essentially piece of tape with little mm -hmm. dots on it that you would then tape onto your paper. Yeah. And, and, and it just, I, I never used it. It just looked to me sort of like too kind time consuming. So whenever I needed to draw a shadow or, you know, a, a gradient or anything like that, I would just do it by hand as best I could. Yeah. And I think it's, uh, there's a lot of great tone. And I was wondering, sometimes you're, your pen lines are so fine in this book that I really did wonder if it was done with Photoshop or if it was done by hand. And one of them is uh, Mumblin's nose. Do you draw those dots? You could, I don't know if kids can see it right here, but if you could see Mumblin has a little bit of color to his nose, right? Yeah, his nose, his nose is Photoshopped. Okay, I was wondering, did you like, you know, <laughs> put every one of those pin bricks in there. Here's another Photoshop moment. Yeah, now, that's, that's a cool one. That's like uh, Mumblin is looking into the magic grapefruit and there's yeah. a picture, but the picture is sort of like just coming into focus. And mm. so Tom figured out this great effect where it looks almost almost like an old black and white TV. Yeah. It's just sort of warming up and the picture is just sorting to kind of, you know, fading in, you know what uh. I mean? You may have, you may be paying Tom too much because all that is is just a blur effect. And he probably told you, well, I did this crazy, you know, you wouldn't understand, but, you know, uh, 
million bucks for that. Um, so I'm going to like your your monsters are fa fantastic. You've got dragons and trolls, and I don't want to give too much away. There's a monster named Kathy, but I won't uh, talk too much about her. Um, but I am going to to give you a little bit of a hard time. I want to ask you, Lincoln, have you ever actually seen a horse before? Yeah, I have seen a horse before. Are you going to make fun of the way I draw a horse's feet, Jeff? <laughs> I, am, I am going to make fun of the way that you draw horses. Uh, and, and in fact, Lincoln, I'm going to put you to task. I I need you to teach um, I need you to teach kids how to draw a horse the Lincoln purse way because this is how horses yeah. should look. And that is how horses should look. Yeah, it is. So, yeah. so let's do this. Okay, every artist life. really hates to draw a certain thing. I think you've told me in the past it was bicycles for you. But so yeah, Lincoln, but... you you draw there. I'm gonna draw along with you. I'm gonna draw. I'm just gonna draw like a like a deer instead, but using the same principles. Does that work? Okay. okay yeah. Great. All right. I will just I will just draw a horse. Okay. Um, well, of course. There's a great there's a there's a song by Terry Allen where he talks about uh, there's a there's a, a waitress in the song who draws horses and yeah. someone points out you're not drawing horses you're drawing sausages so <laughs> you you start out with a sort of like sausage shape yeah, and yeah. then um, there's a tail back there sausage shape this already better than your your uh your max horses this looks very realistic <laughs> i told yeah. you I was gonna, oh there's the feet okay there we go <laughs> keep going this is cool so you really do so you're you're gonna in real life you're gonna use a blue pencil right to do your drawings right so there's an animator's tool called a non-photo blue pencil yeah and it's called that because it doesn't show up when you photocopy or scan something. Yeah, yeah. And um, I can't remember how I first found out about that or who told me about it, but it's yeah. great because when you then subsequently ink your, your sketches, you don't have to bother to erase yeah. the non-photo blue pencil. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, that's cool. All right. I like that your horses do have a lot of character. I like it when they're all walking in a line because you can tell you alternate the you know the legs so that <laughs> you just photocopy the you notice board. you notice everything jeff <laughs> yeah all right I, I was really blown away by the artwork in this book all right i'm going to show you mine this is a deer not a horse but all right how'd i do wow jeff <laughs> right. it, it's it's possible I didn't really draw this, and a guy named Matt Tavares drew this uh, deer, but I had to, uh, I had to, you know, I, I had to show up there. Uh, that is a great horse. I think we're going to do something really risky. Okay. Okay. We are going to we are going to bring a kid onto the screen, Kim. Yes. Uh, Kim, yes. What do you think about this idea? I want to bring a kid onto the screen and talk to that kid for a minute. Okay. Is there a kid that maybe put a question into the question bank that that might be um, uh, interested in coming on? Yep. Let's see. So okay. we already answered Owen's question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have uh, Sam. You know what? David Sanborn has been really, um, really a vocal as well. And now, yes, David I Sanborn. know every kid is going to write into the uh, into yep. the comments, but we can only have one at a time. So okay. let's have David and see see what happens. Okay. Where, You're not going to believe this, but I. But I grew up with someone named David Sanborn. And in fact, David Sanborn and I were the ushers at my brother's wedding. So th this this bodes well that, <laughs> this, this, that a kid this, named David Sanborn is coming on here. The, you know what? You don't have that many fans. This may be a David Sanborn. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so I sent da I, David, I sent you um, an invite. OK, yeah. And so Dave when we sent you the invite, um, let's see, where is it? Click yep. up. Click accept to allow Crowdcast access to your camera and your mic. It sounds yeah. scary, but it really is okay. Yeah, as long as you're That's like scary. not in the bathroom or something. No, That's not good. in the bathroom. Yeah, okay. Let's see not, if David comes no. on. He's... And then we we could send out a back out, a backup invitation okay. um, to, uh, let's see, I think there was a, a Hannah. I, I know that there are a lot of people. Oh, here we go. We got you. Is Excellent. this David? 
Hey, David. David, very nice to meet you. Lincoln, Lincoln, I was thinking what could be really fun is if you, um, why don't you, can you show us what David would look like in your world? Do you feel good about doing that? Like what sure. would he look like if he was a, a big Nate character or a Max in the Midnight's character? Yeah, so I'm gonna ask David to, to, to get as close to his camera as he can. Okay, great, great. Do you feel good about this, David? <laughs> okay. Good. Now, David, I, now I am not a full disclosure. I'm not a caricaturist, but uh, let's let's see what I can do here. Okay. Great. All righty. So David has sort of a he's got one of those faces where it's a little pointier down below. So yeah, he's that's David. What we call that strong jawline, David. I don't that's have that. exactly. Now, in real life, your ears aren't this big, David, but we cartoonists do like to exaggerate a little bit. So yeah. a little bit of hair there. You can't see much hair on the sides. Now, you're not bald on the sides like Big Nate, but and then <laughs> a little, some hair that is standing up a little bit. I think in yeah. the old days, we used to call that a cowlick. Now yeah. we just call it now we call it bedhead. <laughs> so you're not supposed to have bedhead at 734, David. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're a vampire, then it's okay. Okay. Um, hey, Kim, did you um? Can you see the picture centered? Because my, it's really thin on my screen. But can you see it? I can see it. Okay. Good. There we yep. go. Yep. That's cool. Okay, I see. Okay. You know, Dave, David, what do you think about Lincoln? He, he, you know, eyeballs to him are are vertical slits. What do you think about that? Yeah, I usually don't really draw eyes that much. Yeah, yeah, but it's cool. Like, eyes, uh, eyes are hard to draw. Yeah. yeah. But I could tell you're you're missing a tooth there, so I gave you a little gap there. You look like a hockey player, David. Right, yeah. That's cool. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do this. I can't tell. Do you have do you have do you have freckles? I can give you a little freckles, just <laughs> like a young Richie Cunningham from the old happy days there. Like there we go. Whoops. Yeah. Now like look at that, he's, he's 58 yeah, years bad. old. There we go. That's really cool. So That's David, here's cool. what I recommend. Your dad, I think, already took a picture of the screen, right? All right, so we got to all make a face. <laughs> Excellent. You know? And David, you gotta, uh, your dad's got to take another picture. Here we go. Look there at dad's come. juggling. Good job, dad. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Excellent. So, you know what? D thank you very much, David, for showing right. up and showing your Thanks, face. Thanks, David. Take care. Bye, and David. Let's go. I'm going to get one more here on screen. Okay. I'm gonna get, how about Rosalina? Is she available? Do you think you can you could Let's see, see her? I can find her. She was just the next person. Let's see. That. that Rosanthala? Yeah. Oh, yep. Is okay. that how you spell? I, I think so. We'll find yeah. out when she comes on screen. If Did I, I say right? we will soon find out. Rosanna. And I have a, I have a different kind of challenge for you, Lincoln. Okay. All right. Okay. Hey, how are you doing? Good. Good. And how do you pronounce your name? Um, my name is Olivia. Oh, Olivia. Okay. You showed up. Okay. So yeah, I think we, we saw maybe your parents' name. Okay. Yeah. Is either your mom or dad or older sibling in the house with you? Yes. Okay. Now, don't put them in the room. Is your is your dad with you? No. No. Your mom? Yes. Okay. So here's what I want you to do. You're without us seeing. I want you to describe your mom as best as you can to Lincoln, who has to draw her, and with your guidance. Okay. And we're gonna see how close he comes. Do you think that your mom will be willing to come on screen after Lincoln is done? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. <laughs> so let's see. Go ahead. D tell tell us everything you can about your mom's face. Well, do you think it's a round face or a sort of more thin face? My, my, um, I have, a, I have an oval <laughs> long face. It's round, I think, kind of. Okay. All right. I'll just start. I'll just start with a. Just with sort of an, an oval. We'll go from there. Okay. What's her, How, what's her what's her hair like? Um, straight. Straight. Does she have bangs? No. 
Okay, so is it parted in the middle? Is it parted on the side? Does she wear it back in a ponytail? What, it's how it's long like is it? down and it's um, like on the, parted on the side. Okay. Can you see her ears or not? Yes. Okay. I can see. Okay, Does she, is she wearing earrings? Yeah. All right. What kind of earrings? Uh, <laughs> small circles. Small like, circles, yeah. okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, Okay. so, and it's parted on the side, so I'm going to, is it, uh, <laughs> okay, so like so, and then is it long? It sort of comes down back like yeah. so? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Glasses? No. No, no glasses. glasses. Does she have Does she big have eyes or little eyes? Please tell me her eyes look like like two vertical lines. <laughs> <laughs> no. are, are they far apart or close together or average? Not average, I guess. Okay. <laughs> and, and does she have like a strong eyebrow game or a weak eyebrow game? <laughs> strong eyebrow. Strong, strong eyebrows. eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> All right, eyebrows. I'm just gonna make some little my my regular kind of eyes because I'm just I'm so limited I can't do anything else. How about okay? Let's talk about the nose. Yeah. Teensy tiny, big, wide. So, let's do this, Olivia. I will I will draw a, a nose and you tell me if I'm on the right track. Okay. Okay. What if I did a nose like a round nose? Sort of like that, with a little shadow underneath. Is that, is, am I on the right track there? Or is it more a nose like, like maybe that, something like that? And that? Okay. You think so? Oh, it's All a right. little bit. What about, I'm going to make it a little lower. Does she wear like a lot of lipstick? Uh, does she yeah. have a teensy tiny mouth or a big wide mouth or something in between? <laughs> In when between, she, when she, smile, when I she think, smiles, can you see her teeth? Or is yes. she one of those people that only smiles with her mouth closed? I don't know. I think with her mouth closed. All right. All right. Tell me when to stop. Does she have one tooth? <laughs> no. Okay. Did she have two teeth? No. Okay, she so has like, more. Lincoln, more than two teeth. More than two teeth. Okay. okay. Do you think... Here's how I usually draw mouths. Like I, I sort of do a like a straight line across, and then like so, <laughs> and then I could go like that. So you see her upper teeth like that. Now, if I do if I do what I did for David Sanborn, I could make her look like a hockey player and like give her a just black it black you know black out a, 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 a gap between her two front teeth. No. Okay. Are you you're saying your mom is, is average, her face is average in every way? I have a feeling that's not true. I have okay, I'll give her little dimples. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. I, is your mom's name actually Rosalina? It's Rosangela. Rosangela, you're right, Kim. I All Rosangela. right. I think it's time for Rosangela to step forward. The big reveal. Here we go. Oh, oh that looks I, just I, like I me. That bad. <laughs> I wasn't that bad. No, no, you got you know you're you're in range. Yeah. That's so That's cool. Awesome. Well, thanks for playing this game. That could have gone so wrong. <laughs> but we're just happy that it did. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Olivia. Bye. <laughs> All right, you know what? There's a there's another picture I want to give you a little bit of a hard time. Uh, I'm sorry. I I did compliment you a lot. Yeah. Right. But this, can you? There's one picture that kind of freaked me out in this. Okay. Point. Can you think of what that picture was? No. It just didn't look right. It just didn't. It was really off. I was like, did Lincoln even draw this picture? Uh, because this does not look right. There's something weird about it. And it's this picture right here oh yeah that's right your character max here or or that might be somebody very similar to max right. has has eyeballs right right now everybody right. knows the big nate character has i you know just the, the eyes as you say are like two ink 
slits. But here, this character has eyeballs. So can you imagine Nate, big Nate, with actual, like, open, you know, eyeballs, what that would look like? Well, it's funny you say that because now that Big Nate is a TV show, one of the things that we talked about as they were building the characters in three dimensions was, you know, the uh, the art director said, I'm not sure we're going to be able to make just the two black lines for eyes. We're going to have to open up the eyes. So, so Big Nate on Paramount Plus has actual eyeballs and round eyes. They're still kind of vertical, but they're they're different from the way I draw them. So... So, yeah, well, I can imagine what Nate would look like <laughs> or what Max would look like yeah. with real eyes. Yeah. Because, you know, if they're alarmed, like, let's say I draw Max here. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Okay. Well, so, the cover, right? I'll draw, I'll draw Max with the cap, nose, ear. Okay. Yeah. So, obviously, I would just normally draw Max's eyes like so. Yeah. Yeah. But I do, depending on what's going on in the story, mm -hmm. I can draw different sorts of eyes. You know, if Max is, if Max is shocked by something. Right. Yeah. I'll, I'll open up the eyes like yeah. so. Right. Yeah. So, so and I of, can do it. Of, of course, I was giving you a hard time. Um, I think big Nate looks great. And I'm wondering what's it, what's it like for you? You know, we're, we're both in, we're both in the same world right now, right? Where we brought our two dimensional characters into three dimensions. What's it, <laughs> what's it like for you to kind of give up a little bit of that control and to let somebody else bring your characters to life? Is it scary? Is it exciting? It's exciting because they've done, I think just a phenomenal job. I think the characters look great. But I would be lying if I said I wasn't skeptical because I remember years and years ago just getting some modeling clay and seeing if I could make a 3D Nate. Yeah. And the hair just completely threw me. It's like, <laughs> this is impossible. <laughs> right. I will never be able to do this. But in fact, they did a great job with Nate's hair and the rest of him and, and with all the characters. And now Max and the Midnights is also going to be uh, a TV show as well. So just yesterday, I got some character designs for what Max is going to look like in 3D. And that was super exciting. So it's cool. Um, yeah. So it is it is a little strange, but I think you know, Nickelodeon is going to such lengths to reference the 2D drawings and to mm -hmm. try to be as faithful as they possibly can in three dimensions with all the characters. So yeah, it's exciting. Well, congratulations. It really is exciting. It's it's neat. And I was saying to you that imagine 33 years ago when we first uh, made connections, if somebody said, hey, 33 years from now, you two are both going to have an animated show, one on Disney and one on Nickelodeon. Uh, I think we would have thought that, that that sounded kind of crazy. I think um, so. So one of the things about cartoonists is that Cartoonists try to use as few words as possible or use as few lines as possible um, to get the biggest impact possible. So what I what I'd like us what I'd like to do is for how many questions do we have in the queue, Kim? Oh, Kim might be uh she might be in the restroom. Um, oh, here's no, what, I'm muted. I'm sorry. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> okay. How many questions that we actually have in the queue 39 yeah it says there's 39 all right so kim some of them are going to be good questions some of them are going to yeah. be a little shaky why don't you do this <laughs> i want you to ask hey, all the questions that can be asked i want you okay. to ask them to lincoln and lincoln your challenge so that you can get through as many as possible in three minutes I'm is to use not. as few words as possible. Got it. I can do that. Can get through. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Here we go, Kim. Okay. Do you remember being a cartooning teacher at art camp? My mom was in your class. <laughs> yes, at Wayne Fleet Summertime Arts. Absolutely. Excellent. Next question. Okay. Uh, any? Is there any talk of a crossover between Max and Nate? Not at this time. Mm -hmm but there is, but go ahead. 
<laughs> Next. Will you guys ever collaborate on a book? Jeff? That I, I can't imagine how that would go in two different art styles, but I, I have a feeling we'll be working together in, in some way in the future. One day we did we did a Pop Tropic Island, which was a mix of my technology and Lincoln's storytelling and art. So we have worked together before. Okay, keep going, Kim. Okay, what advice do you have for young cartoonists? That you need to practice your writing just as much as you practice your drawing. Mm, good answer. That All is right. a good answer. Um, Lincoln, are you like one of the big Nates? <laughs> Am I one of the big Nates? Are you, like, are you like one of the big Nates? Oh. Well, I'd say I'm a little bit like Nate, but probably a lot more like Nate's dad and Nate's art teacher. Uh, <laughs> good one. All right, Sam G. Yes, we did answer your question. And go, go for it, Kim. What else you got? Yes. Will there be a Max and the Midnight's book forever? I want to know. It's not my plan. No. Oh, God. Let me, I want to look how this one ends just so I can know. Ah, uh, I, I see. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to try to turn, I'm going to try to change that answer. Keep going, Kim. Okay. Who are your least favorite characters that you've written about? Well, some characters aren't that likable, but that doesn't mean I don't like them as characters. So coach John in big Nate is not very likable or Wait. King ghastly in Max and the Midnight's is not very likable, but I like drawing them and I like writing them. So. We have oh. a guy that kick, kicks cats in this book. So, okay, yeah. Kim, question? Okay, this is this is not really a question, but it's it just very cute. My little sister just wanted to say you and Big Nate really inspire her. She's drawn the trio in their Halloween costumes from every year. And, oh, and they showed you a picture. So oh. you'll have to click on that later. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. All right, Kim, three more. Three? Yes. Okay, this is hard. Um, Oh, Jeff is, so here's a question for you, Jeff. Is Diary of a Wimpy Kid going to be made into more movies? Yes, working on it now. Like as soon as I get home, I'm continuing to work on the next Wimpy Kid movie. So, okay. this, and Roger Gruels comes out this fall. So pretty cool. Excellent. Um, will there ever be a Greg video game or a Big Nate game? The good question. I don't know. And how about you, Lincoln? Are you going to do a Big Nate game? I have no idea. As you know, I'm I'm technologically challenged, Jeff. So <laughs> it's it's unlikely that if I have anything to do with it, it's unlikely that it will happen. Yeah. All right. And Kim, one more question. How about the okay. best one you can find? Okay. Well, these are both sort of the same. So um, Peter wants to know: Have you ever drawn Chester's face? And Amy wants to know what Chester's face looks like. I have never drawn Chester's face. For those who don't know, Chester is a bully in Big Nate who never appears. Ah. And the reason I've never drawn his face is because if I tried to, I would only be sort of disappointing people who have imagined him as sort of a cross between like Sasquatch and King Kong. <laughs> so uh, I just think he's best left to the imagination. Speaking of which, maybe we get a little bit of this guy. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe that's Chester. Well, um, sounds like the grout. <laughs> Lincoln, you have so many fans and it's so inspiring to see, uh, you know, all these questions. And I know it's disappointing for some kids not to get their questions answered, but you have an early bedtime and, um, you know, <laughs> I'm actually in, I'm actually wearing my pajamas right now. I, I, I full disclosure, but it, it has been really fun speaking with you tonight. We're so lucky and so blessed to have you here with us tonight. We really are. And Thank Kim's going to so point, point to this green thing on our screen right now. So I don't know who's in the middle on your screen because sometimes it changes, but right in the middle, there is a green button. Click here to purchase a signed book. So you know what's really funny is look at how, I noticed this, look at how similar your signature, book plates, signature, exactly the same. So yeah, I'm, he, I'm consistent. He uses yes, an auto. Yeah, very consistent. So here's book number three, The Tower of Time. You get a signed copy. And one and two, we have book plates. Thank you for signing those for us, Lincoln. Yes. My pleasure. I my pleasure. Cannot remember having laughed so hard in an event. Thank you so much. That was fun. Yeah. Thank you so much, Lincoln. And I can't wait to see what you come up with next. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. It's always good to see you. I'll see you guys soon.
Thanks to everybody right. who showed up tonight. Lincoln. Thank you. Thank you guys. We're a very hilarious chat audience. That was fun. Take care. <laughs> Bye-bye.